idea to localize our mission and want to localize our mission. And when it's a push, to deliver with some of the things that actually make all the difference as you go forward. The first thought I want to share with you is that everybody is, lots of people I talk to, uh, lots of people want to start their own company. They start their conversation by, they come to and say, I have this great idea, or I have this good idea, or I have this brilliant idea. Ideas are excellent, ideas are great. As ideas are always a good start. It's the end there, they're just a start. Ideas on their own mean nothing. Ideas, not that anybody can challenge an idea. I can sit down and come up with a million ideas. I can sit down and say, I want to invent a flying machine that flies faster than the speed of flight. It's an idea. There are actually people working on stuff like that. If I had a and these people are close to the NASA working on that, and they took it from just a simple idea that anybody can challenge, anybody can shoot down and formulate it to something, a uh, story of how to take that idea further. Maharada, we need lots of people, leaders of yours, who want to join forces with you, who want to collaborate with you. You have to take whatever you're talking about behind beyond that idea phase. If you talk to investors, if you talk to partners, if you talk to parties, ideas are great. As none of us, as we sit on the other side of the table, None of us is interested in hearing an idea. We're always interested in hearing a story of how that idea can be taken forward. The next thing that, as an overwhelming Zahira uh, that we see all over the region, as we have that habit of you know, people calling in saying, you know, we have this great product, we have this great project, we won't talk to you about. We welcome people and you know, we wait, we're sitting in a room, usually three or four of us and we find one person walking in the room. This one person can be, you know, a genius. He can build the greatest product. He can build, you know, the, the greatest thing in the world. I just read recently that the gentleman in Google who developed Gmail, developed the first prototype of Gmail in one afternoon. It's great. One person can build products. One person can come up with a great invention. However, what people need to understand that businesses are not built by a person. Businesses are built by people. When you, when you say an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur is not about building a great product. An entrepreneur is about stepping out of the comfort zone and going into a adventure and trying to build a business about it. Businesses are about people. And if you want to convince other people that you're serious, you have to show other people that you have the people who can build that business. And what's even more, Businesses are built by people, and great businesses are built by great people. So the greater the people that you have around you, the greater the group that you can assemble around you of really smart people, not just developing stuff, maybe they are selling stuff, maybe they are marketing stuff, maybe they are promoting stuff, maybe they are just supporting you and patting you in the back. By ensuring that the people there are great people and smart people, this helps you greatly, this helps you go forward. The age of the solo cowboy is no longer. We are not interested in solo cowboys because solo cowboys cannot build a business. They can have a great idea, great product. This is what we're not about. We're not, it's not what we're looking for. We're looking for great businesses. So make sure that you have the right people. The third thing, the third idea, you may see this very quickly. You tell people to do your homework. Everybody says, okay, I'm coming, talking to people, talking to partners, talking to companies, talking to others who I want to sell my product to. Of course I'm going to do my home. No, you'll be very surprised. Most people don't do their home. And then again, and then again, you hear people saying, okay, I am building that great product. I have this great idea for an e-commerce, group one, website, great, you know, I'm going to do it and going to sell it for a million dollars. Now, they did that. They do their homework quite well for the area that they're most comfortable with. So I'm a guy who knows about you know, products and commerce. I focus on understanding commerce opportunity. I'm a guy who focuses on technology. I'm best to develop a website and user usability and interfaces and all of that, blah, blah, blah. It's an ecosystem for you. The lady in that, they may not have to do the the hard work. You take the easiest path. They may not have to do the hard Spend lots of effort the areas that they are comfortable with, that they are strong with, and they don't spend the effort elsewhere because they feel they don't have the knowledge. I don't know how I'm going to talk to an investor. I don't know anything about numbers. Forget that. Numbers is not my game. I'm going to talk to them about my product. Or I don't know anything.
anything about marketing. I'm not going to talk anything about marketing. In the heart of when you see people who can support you, whether they're partners, whether they're investors, whether you know they are just colleagues, you have to show that you've done the effort. And I'm, I'm related to that point, I'll, I'll tell you actually about an actual story that happened two years ago. I was about to invest in actually an excellent company, an excellent product in, in, the, in the medical and healthcare technologies field. Great product actually. We've, we've done, passed through everything, we've passed through three, four meetings. Great company, great product. And then during the discussion, we were looking at the numbers, verifying the numbers, and we asked them the question. We asked them, okay, this sells to hospitals. How many hospital beds are in Egypt? And the answers that they've given were, it's 30 to 40,000. And we told them, this is again, 30 to 40,000 is, is really a big number. It's 35% difference. What, what is the number? I would assume to build the hospital, I may mean, have any hospital building within Mahadehis, to build the hospital, you get a license. You get a license actually for the capacity of the hospital in Zorq al-Sahra. What did Zorq al-Sahra answer you when you asked them about the number of hospitals? The answer that we got where, you know the government in Egypt, if we go ask them, they will never respond. While he was right, while I tried later to actually ask about the Sakha, and they never gave me the number, we actually, on that moment, we dropped the investment, we shook hands with the gentleman, and we escorted him out of the room. Because this gentleman, on a business that was requiring probably two to three million dollars, he didn't take the effort and only a fast amount of telephone and call the Ministry of Health. While he was right in his thought, as again, businesses are not built by far. Businesses are about, uh, not about our perceptions and conceptions and things that we Problems are Problems are solved by you not know, yeah, just sitting there and dreaming how problems could be solved. It's just about taking the effort, taking the initiative. If something as simple as that, one phone call, one visit, that would have taken him 30 minutes, and he didn't do it. Do you think when the business starts growing and he faces real problems in the real life, he starts doing that? So do your homework to be prepared, but also do your homework to the largest extent possible to show the others that you're really serious about what you're doing. Here at this, people say it's the way to to the idea of art. But here it's, it's true. Uh, what we're telling people, concepts again, are great. Plans are great, but you are more valuable if you have actually started to develop something concrete and showed something. And the heart of the night, you see somebody in the room saying, I have this great idea about this product and I know how to do it. You know, I may listen and appreciate that. If somebody comes into the room and says, you know what, I've developed a prototype and I would like to demo it to show how something works, I value you more, I appreciate you more. Not just monetary value, but the barrier to acceptance drops significantly. If somebody comes and says, you know what, I've taken that, I've launched it in public beta, I've helped people, and this is the feedback that I got, and I use this feedback to even develop something further, then I value that person more. And now that the message is here, in the hard drive we have all this great buzz about investors, VCs, incubators, angel investors, angel funds, all of that is great. That's what it is, it's not people have an idea of a product or a company and just go around and try to shop for money or shop for help. No matter every single moment that you spend on this earth counts, time is the only asset that is not replenished. replenished. You have to use every moment to try to advance what you're trying to do, what you're trying to build. Use all the resources that you can to build something concrete. Because the more you build something concrete, the more people will appreciate your story and what you're coming up with. Here I'm commenting on, on something that we hear all the time, which is manage the expectations, manage the expectations. This is specifically true when you have a strategic partner, when you have a strategic investor, uh, when you have somebody who's helping you to build a product or enter the partnership with you to promote it, whatever, is that if they say, you know, everybody has expectations and you need to manage the expectations of your partner. I think this is wrong. You don't manage expectations. When you seek help for an, with an investor or a partner or somebody you're trying to employ for the business, it's not about seeing what his expectations are and trying to manage them. No, this leads you to to go into this mess of intersections. Because everybody and I want to go there. I want to build a great product while this other guy wants to make a lot of money. Uh, I want to live in Dubai while this guy wants to stay in Egypt. 
I want to be glamorous and show in the news, while this guy wants to go out and you know has a great car and goes out with lots of great girls. It's not about managing the expectations of everybody. Because as we said, businesses are built by people and partners. And the more people and the more partners you have, you have more expectations and eventually they are never, you'll never be able to manage that. What we need to ensure from day one is that all parties, both stakeholders, and stakeholders mean your founders, your partners, your colleagues, your senior management, your investors, you're all aligned on where you want to go. You're all aligned on what is the objective of what you're trying to build. If you feel that there is misalignment, do not proceed with the partnership. If you feel that there is misalignment, do not engage with that partner that you want to bring. No matter how good he is, because he is good today, as once you go forward and the roads start going in different directions, you will feel the dilemma then. And the last thought on that is that when you go, we eventually seek investments. At any point of time, whether you're a startup, whether you grow your business and you're requiring some growth capital, you have to understand that money is not free. What we mean by money is not free, people, again, take the obvious. Yes, you know, an investor will give me some money and I'll give him a part of my company. That's easy. No, it goes much further uh, than that. It's not about a share in the company. By having a partner in the company, he will exert some level of control. And even if that control is not direct, he exert some level of influence. Or you will have the burden that you have somebody who, as a shareholder, you owe him money or an equity in the business, or you just have something as simple as the pressure continuously on your back to drive and deliver and, 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 and. When you enter a partnership, especially with an investor or a partner in the business, you have to understand that money does not come for free, it comes with all of that. You have to be ready to pay the price. Not everybody is ready to pay that price. There are people who want to have pride in what they're doing, they want to keep it close to their hearts, that's well and good, it doesn't make them bad. When only when you're prepared to pay that price, it's only then when you think, when you seek a partner. Now, to close, I want to share with you just two quotes, because I think they are very, very insightful. The first quote is actually from a book called Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, that I used as the title of my presentation by a brilliant writer, Mr. Douglas Adams. And in that book, there is part of the book where it is, it goes in outer space, there is an alien species, surprisingly, they're mice, they're very advanced, and they decided to build a great computer, a complete thought. And that objective of that big computer is to find the secret to life, the universe, and everything. And that computer worked for a million years, and it produced an answer. And the answer was 42. And when they checked with the computer, well, why is 42? Can you check again? And the computer worked and worked and worked and said, I am sure that the answer is 42. But what he told the alien species is, Maybe what you should do is, is not work on finding the answer, maybe it would work on finding the question. Now, to some this may seem very, very dumb, but it's actually very insightful. What we're trying to do, what we're trying, what we go into life, what we go into business, what we are going into, you know, marriage, what we're going through all the time that we spend on this earth, is a journey. We go through a journey. Every day that passes, we do something different, it takes us to different places, not necessarily to them, to them, to them, to them. It's all about the journey. The secret of life is about the journey that we go through and how we go through that journey. And the reflection of that in business, when you're doing business, when you're establishing a company, make sure that this is a long journey and make sure that you're enjoying every single moment of it. And the last quote I want to share with you is with a man that I came again. Very, very insightful and should have inspired much more entrepreneurs than just in words, which is Sir Winston Churchill. And in, you know, he, they were asking about something in one press conference about the war, and they said, you know, so is this the end? And he told them, you know what? This is not the end. I don't think even this is the beginning of the end. Maybe this is the end of the beginning. And the message that. Whatever happens to you, whatever you face when you're building a business, whatever frustrations that you feel, whatever you know, hiccups that you have in the business, you lose all your money, you know, people leave you, your girlfriend dumps you, you know, you lose a lot of money. 
whatever happens, this is not never the end. This is never the beginning of the end. It may be the end of the beginning of a learning journey that we just went through. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Wadid. So now, please.